The Joker is an odd film. It is one that is live action and attempts to be grounded in reality, but so many elements of this film are so cartoonish, I really wish it was animated. I consistently found myself being taken out of the film by how cartoonish and artificial its world and characters felt. Another major problem with this film is that it literally has to tell you what the purpose of the film is, and the ending is so laughable that after the movie finished, I realized that I not only wasted my time, but I also wasted my money, which is why I have to discuss this movie because my time and my money are very valuable to me. Let's start with the man himself, Arthur Fleck, or Joker. Arthur is a strange character. He is a malnourished smoker who was abused as a child and is socially inept, but has cartoonish strength and stamina, a medical disorder so ridiculous that it's straight out of an anime. Arthur explains that he has a condition that makes him laugh uncontrollably, but I found this laugh to get progressively weaker and weaker as the film went on almost as if Joaquin Phoenix himself started to find it annoying and no longer cared about putting in so much effort to his laugh. As I said before, Arthur has cartoonish strength, endurance, stamina. Very early into the movie, Arthur is working a job as a sign spinner. The sign gets stolen by some teenagers and after a long chase scene, he then gets assaulted by said teens. This scenario felt so artificial and cartoonish. In what world would a man who can punch a time clock off the wall be unwilling to fight against some teenagers, he could knock them out with a single punch. You must be thinking, well, he wasn't evil then, so of course he wouldn't hurt those teenagers, to which I ask you, have you met a group of teenagers, and not wanted to at least imaginary smack them or at least lecture them over their gross behavior. But okay, sure, Arthur isn't evil. So in the next scene, he would clearly deny the gun offered to him by his cartoonishly evil co-worker, correct? Wrong. He accepts the gun. Does he plan on using it on the next group of teens? He wasn't assaulted by adults, he was assaulted by teens. Now allow me to deviate just a bit here and go back to the cartoonishly evil co-worker. This character from the moment they were on screen was so obviously a bad person that I found it shocking when no one in the clown agency or wherever they work reported him. He so very obviously gives Arthur the gun in front of everybody and it was a slap in the face later when the film decided that his co-workers would act shocked to find out that the gun was actually his. This was made even worse when you realize, oh, this character was created to die because Arthur, the malnourished, abused smoker, somehow has enough strength to bash his brains in against a wall. But... Hollywood has taught me that the skull has a consistency of Play-Doh, and anyone can cave it in with a little bit of elbow grease. But let's get back to Arthur, who carries the gun and accidentally drops it at a job at the children's hospital. This is another so cartoonish and artificial plot point that I nearly burst out laughing. In what world would the man carry a live firearm into a children's hospital? But you might be saying, he was just assaulted, so of course he's scared, and would take the gun just in case another group of rogue teenagers decided to jump him. And to that I am in disbelief. Disbelief that someone would try to defend this painfully artificial plot point. Listen, I understand all plot is convenience. Whatever is convenient to make progress will happen. That is plot. But it's in the way that the film so artificially tries to make Arthur's life worse and worse that the film itself becomes worse and worse. Arthur ends up losing his job because of this incident and I found myself so frustrated. The film tries to make it seem like it's the world's fault that he lost his job, and if society wasn't so bad, he wouldn't need to bring a gun. But then you remember that this is a film in live action, and people aren't supposed to act like dumb cartoon anime characters. So I lost all sympathy for Arthur. He was the idiot who brought the gun. He very obviously made a choice. And before you tell me, but dude, he's mentally ill and unstable, he can't think logically. Allow me to explain. I have a degree in psychology, and nothing in this film's portrayal of mental illness acts real. It's so cartoonishly bad, I would like to bring up a scene that perfectly explains this. There is a scene in this film in which Arthur removes items from his fridge in order to crawl inside of it and closes it. It was this that made me realize how silly and pathetic the attempts at showing mental illness were. No one on this writing team studied mental illness. They simply watched other psychological horrors and mimicked it. Not only did this bother me, but the film seems to think I have the intelligence of an infant. 
even though the film is rated R. It dedicates the ending to explaining the point of the film and to remind you that you're watching the Joker and that hey, Batman's also here. Before Arthur goes on the talk show with Murray, he explains to him that he wants to be introduced as Joker because Murray called him that in a previous scene. It was at this moment that my head met my hands and I wanted to leave. But as I said before, I spent money, so I'm going to see this till the end. While on the show, Joker explains the entire message of the film, ruining the entire film. Seriously, this film turns into a PSA for what feels like 15 minutes of Joker explaining why he became the Joker and throwing a childish tantrum. Afterwards, Joker ends up killing Murray and is being transported to by police when suddenly they are crashed by one of the rioters and he is saved. Then it gets worse. Joker awakens from the crash takes the blood from his mouth, and smears it to create the iconic Joker smile. Remember how Jared Leto had a tattoo on his hand? Somehow I hate that less now. But let's get back to this film not respecting your intelligence. There is an absolute horrible and pathetic attempt at making you believe Arthur is dating someone. It is very, very, very obvious that this is not the case. Believe me, the dialogue was so unnatural and laughable that I found it appalling absolutely appalling that the film had to literally show the audience that it was not a real relationship the whole time. You have already shown me that he is socially inept and has figments of imagination, so why did you waste my time showing me these scenes? Before you tell me, it's because he's mentally ill, so it's scary that he thought up his imaginary relationship with the girl. Again, this is what cartoons teach you, not actual study of psychology. Let's go back a bit, because I got ahead of myself. Another issue arises in a train scene, where some cartoonish men in business suits act so cartoony I thought they were CG. Remember how I said this film feels artificial? I'm gonna keep saying that because, well, it is. So, Arthur's anime laugh condition starts conveniently happening, and these men in business suits start assaulting him because what else would they do? Act human? Don't be ridiculous. In my lifetime, I have ridden in public transportation for so long it feels like a second home to me. And I have ran into my fair share of weirdos, to put it nicely. Never once did me or a group of friends decide, hey, we should beat that guy up. But then again, we aren't artificial characters made to progress the plot of a horrible film now, are we? Arthur ends up using the gun he was given and with pinpoint accuracy, he guns down all three men. Again. How cartoonish is this? I have not shot a firearm, but even I know that a first time shooter would not have pinpoint accuracy, nor be able to handle the recoil. Seriously, the way he shoots this gun is as if he's been doing it for years and it's all in a day's work. Not only does he do this, but then he full sprints to a park bathroom. For someone who smokes in nearly every scene he's in, Arthur has amazing stamina. After the murder, people all over Gotham are cheering him on, cheering on the killer clown, saying he stands up against the rich and fascism. Yeah, man, down with the system. Now let's shift focus here to Arthur's mom, who right from the beginning of the film, it is very, very obvious she is not mentally stable. Again, this movie tries to shock you by explaining that. Yes, the mother was crazy. And yes, she let Arthur get abused. Yes, she believed she had an affair with Thomas Wayne, even though you can very obviously tell this is not the case. <laughs> Why do you continue to waste my time, Joker film? Another example of Hollywood magic that is absolutely pathetic is the way Arthur kills his mother. He does the old pillow over the face trick, but he does it for like 20 seconds? Feels like 15? And doesn't even apply that much pressure to warrant his mother's freak out. But what do I know, I've never suffocated anyone with a pillow. But let's get back to the fake affair. Arthur is led to believe he is the son of Thomas Wayne, and so he visits the Wayne Manor to find a young Bruce Wayne, and this is another cartoonish artificial scene. Arthur manages to grab Bruce's attention with magic tricks, and when he gets close enough, Arthur literally puts his fingers in Bruce's mouth and makes the smile, to which I question if that child was real. Have you ever met a child? If you have one, try to get a stranger to put their fingers in his mouth and see what happens. Since we are on the topic of the Waynes, I still can't believe it, but they somehow managed to do the Batman origin story, pearls and all, in a Joker film. And you have no idea how angry I got. I hate, absolutely hate character origins. Never has an origin story made me like or care about a character. 
They always feel like an afterthought or fan service. So where do we go from here? How about the overuse of the same music? Over and over and over and over and over and over. Or the boring and mediocre cinematography, making me wonder how can they still get away with such boring camera work in 2019. How I wish this film was animated. But no, it's live action, and I am left disappointed. Why are people making it seem like this movie is so edgy and daring? It's the same half-assed comic-based movies we've been getting for the past decade. Nothing has changed. Joker is a horrible film. Not for political reasons, it's just a waste of your time. It treats you like an infant who can't understand anything unless the film stops and explains it to you and why you should care. Much like Arthur, I felt abused by this film. It took an iconic character and turned him into a pathetic attempt at someone suffering from mental illness, placing him in an artificial world with artificial characters. It was all a big joke, but I'm not laughing.